Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro. Now today, we're going to take a look at what is probably the most commonly used plant in bioretention systems in Queensland, and maybe further afield throughout the whole of Australia, and that's the Lamandra. Now to be honest, this is one of the most commonly used plants in any sort of landscaping uh, in Queensland, and we'll bring it into shot and show you here. So right along the edge of this system, this bioretention system here, we have a lovely big row of Lamandras. And these are used really, really regularly. Now what you need to know is there's actually two species of Lamandra uh, that are used really commonly. One of them is Lamandra longifolia, and one of them is Lamandra hystrix. Now the reason, there's a few reasons why these get used really, really regularly. One of them is that they are tough as nails. And this is why they get used regularly in general, not just in bioretention systems, um, because they're tough as nails. Secondly, because they're so tough as nails and they've been used lots, they're quite easily recognised. So it's got to the point now where you can be fairly confident that most maintenance crews know, the, know what a Lamandra is, or at least know that it's something that's meant to be there and should be protected. And, but the third reason, it pops up in bioretention systems as well because it's been relatively well researched. It's not the best performing plant out there in terms of say nitrogen removal or even the most vigorous with its root system in terms of uh, breaking up the filter media and keeping it porous. But because it's so hardy, because it's useful, because it can, uh, can help to outcompete weeds and fill in space, and because of those other reasons about it um, being really easily commercially available, Lamandras get used a lot. So it's worthwhile taking a look at how do we tell apart these two species that are used commonly. So there are a lot of different types of Lamandras and they're not all this big. So this one that you see in front of you, um, its tallest leaf, its very tallest leaf there, is just about head height on me. And I suppose I'm around the you know, 172 centimetre mark or something. So this is a pretty big plant in front of me. Um, they might be able to get a little bit bigger than that, but not a heck of a lot. So, uh, yes, but there are many, many species, and many of them are much, much smaller, right? We can get some, some species of Lamandra that are much lower, like these other um, different species over here. I'm not suggesting that there's any Lamandras in shot. I'm just demonstrating the size of the plant there. For example, there's some Imperata cylindrica over here, um, which is blady grass. That, uh, yeah, you can get Lamandras that are small, like this sort of size, for sure. But the two that we see, um, see commonly in bioretention systems, the Lamandra longifolia and the Lamandra hystrix, once they mature, if they're given the opportunity, will turn into quite big, big plants like these. So how do we tell them apart? Well, it's all about what happens on the tip of the leaves here. And honestly, let's bring that into, ooh, out of focus. Um, we may have trouble getting this in focus, but anyway, um, it's all about what happens on the tips of the leaves. And I'm not the best at identifying them, but we're gonna refer to a great little book here. So this book, if you're in, uh, Southeast Queensland, it's called Mangroves to Mountain. And it's a guide about all the native plants in Southeast Queensland, which is really cool. Now, obviously, if you're not in Queensland, there's probably equivalent books to this for your particular species in your particular area. I was first told about this book by some people in like the bushland reveg, um, you know, bushland management, that sort of space. So I imagine that if you're not in Southeast Queensland, if you went and talked to you know, whoever you can find in that sort of field, they probably know what the best resource is in your area. But anyway, in this particular case, this book has a great little diagram here that shows when hopefully we uh, get the focus to work, uh, it'll do the trick. It shows the different leaf tips of a whole bunch of different Lamandras. So we can see here, let's, where am I? There I am. That's the Lamandra longifolia tip there, and that's the Lamandra hystrix tip. So the difference here is the longer foliar tip is generally a lot flatter and the outsides of the leaves, there can be a couple of uh, little points that extend out from there. Whereas the hystrix leaf tends to have a single central point to it. Now the thing you've got to realize here, and we'll have a look in just a second at a couple of the plants around here, is that lamandras can be a little bit tricky. Firstly, in my experience and on these plants behind me, um, at a first glance, it looks like the same plant has both of those tips growing on it. There can be a few reasons for that. If you, um, for example, had a hystrix with the pointy tip that was pruned off, slashed off, the sort of thing, obviously with straight cuts, it could end up looking like a longer folia. Um, 
similarly with this many leaves, there's bound to be some random variation from time to time. So my general approach is to firstly figure out if the, if the plant's been slashed at any point, which it doesn't look like these ones have, and then look for what's the most common um, form of leaf across the, the whole lot. So if we look at this plant here, and we'll do our best to get this into focus for you. Um, can we convince? No, we're gonna have to go a long way away. Sorry about that. Uh, you can see here, this particular leaf is relatively flat across the top and it's got two outside spikes on it. I really, hey, there we go, that's better focus. Sorry, it's so far away. Um, but it has the two outside spikes on it. So that would suggest longer foliar. Again, we'll grab this particular one, this particular leaf here. Let's try and get it onto some contrast on the background here. Apologies about this. What you can see here is again, relatively flat. Doesn't have such pronounced outside spikes. It's really got three little spikes across the tip of it. Um, again, looks like longer folia. Um, flower spike wise, uh, both uh, longer folia will get a flower spike quite like this. When it's fresh and young, it will have little green berries on it. We might be able to show you some of those over there in a sec, um, but they have these uh, these spiky, uh, spiky looking seed heads. They're not actually really spiky to touch. Um, like you can see, oh, um, it was a little bit spiky, but that's just because I had a cut on my hand and it's jammed it into my cut. Um, so not particularly spiky. So it's not dangerous or anything. Um, if you have a cut on your hand and you grab it, it might hurt like that just did, but generally they're totally fine. So I think these ones up the top are longer foliar. Let's go for a walk and see what else we can find down over here that's interesting. So bear with me while I walk down into the cell of this bioretention system. So first up, we'll just walk around the edge and I'll see if I can find you a younger looking, yeah, okay. So you can find, what have we here? Okay, first up, let's look at the ends of the leaves. So that leaf there, look at that, a much, uh, a much more pronounced central spike to it that would start to suggest that this is a hystrix. You can also, you might not be able to pick it up on the camera, but the texture and the, the glossiness of the leaf has changed a little bit here. This plant feels to the touch a little bit moister. I'm not sure if that's common across all of them, just kind of talking through my observations. Again, this leaf over here is coming to a central point. So this looks like it's a, uh, a hystrix that we've got here. And then we've got whole swathes of different uh, Lamandras right through the center of this system. You can just pick up in the trees there just how thickly they can vegetate out a system if they get a chance to get going in good soil, in good filter media. And obviously, you know, if you've got a system that's that densely vegetated, it's going to do really well to resist weeds and that sort of thing. So good opportunities there. So coming over to this plant over here, what do we got here? Much flatter leaf on that. So I'm thinking Lamandra, and this is where I start to get thrown right, um, thinking Lamandra, thinking Lamandra longifolia, um, where I start to get thrown, right, because this has got, um, it appears, the, maybe the ends of the leaf of the longifolia, but it's got a much darker leaf to it than the first ones we looked at up there. And that might just be the little microclimate it's growing in. This might have a bit more shade, so it might be staying moister longer, or a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, this particular plant here is a Lamandra hystrix, and so on and so forth. So, ah, now I was gonna try and show you berries on, on things. Um, what, what I'll show you in general here is this particular plant here. It's, I'm struggling to see whether that's, I think this is coming off, some, off a hystrix, but I could be wrong. But anyway, Lamandras, when their seed head is newer, will often have a berry-like thing on the seed head like that. Anyway, cool. So we'll just spin this back around. Thanks for tuning into this episode. So lamandras are used really, really commonly. Um, I think they're a really useful species just because of how robust they are. Um, they do, you know, they perform reasonably well in bioretention systems. Not, you know, from, for, to give you an example, from a nitrogen point of view, something like a Carex oppressor, that's C-A-R-E-X, not carrots, the vegetable, carex oppressor, um, will do better at nitrogen removal. But uh, something like a lamandra is just so hardy that it's definitely got merit in these systems. Okay, cool. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found that interesting. 
If you want to find out more about what we do at ID Anthro, you can find us at idanthro.com. We have a mailing list. If you want to get all our videos just mailed straight to your inbox so it's nice and easy to keep up to date with them, go to idanthro.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's a mailing list sign up there. You can also find us on Facebook. So if you want to like the page and follow the stuff that we post on Facebook, we post all our videos there and that sort of thing. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com slash idanthro. And finally, we post all our videos to YouTube. So you can look us up there, subscribe to the channel, etc. Cool. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great time and we'll see you then. Cheers. Bye.